Hey there, movie fans, and Merry Christmas! I'm your host, Tim, and since it's been an amazing year for everyone, not, I'm feeling extra generous and giving you cats a bonus episode that I recorded with my good friend John Knoll from his show, Late Night Taco Delivery, back in the first initial run of this show from way back in the day. It was like circa 2016, 2015. It's my gift to you. Because I love all of you who have been listening, and we'll all be back January 1st for Season 3. But in the meantime, hope you enjoy. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for listening. Welcome to Comtrack, where you'll never have to watch a movie alone again. I'm your host, Tim Lifebite. And I'm Jonathan Knoll. And tonight, we are going to continue our series. Uh, this month, we're going to focus on the uh, the DC animated movies, highly underrated. And tonight, we're going to do probably one of my favorite ones of all time, Justice League Flashpoint Fer- Paradox. It is fantastic. Holy shit. There is... This movie caught me really off guard because, granted, I knew there was like a lot of violence um, mm. in these direct-to-video movies, especially since they went to um, direct-to-video. Yeah, um, you know, and they have that creative liberty. But holy shit, this stuff is brutal. There is more raw carnage in this movie than Saving Private Ryan. It's incredible. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, because uh, um, I mean, the premise is, and this is the. The, the, if you're ever talking to your friends about this movie, don't spoil a thing because half the fun of this movie is um, uh, finding out what happens, what's going on and throughout the movie. The premise is Flash wakes up one day after, uh, you know, kicking the holy sh- crap out of his rogues gallery and suddenly everything is wrong. Mm-hmm. We, I, a, again, if you haven't seen this movie, don't. Don't just turn this off and go watch it and then come back and listen and then to wa- it. Yeah, because we're gonna spoil the living Christ out of this thing. Th- this film is is impeccable. Uh, the voice acting is fantastic. We have a return from Kevin Conroy, mm-hmm. Nathan Fillion, uh, as uh, Batman and Green Lantern, Lantern respectively. respectively. Uh, we have Ron Perlman reprising his role as uh, Deathstroke. Um, as Deathstroke. Um, yeah, which is a really cool thing from the Teen Titans. And Stephen oh, yeah. Bloom as Lex Luthor, man. Yeah, he sounds great for it. Oh, right? I mean, he's diabolical. Yes, bitch. Mm. Yes! Uh, in addition, uh, we also have... De- Even Dana Delaney came back in this lane. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, what was his name? D. Bradley Baker come- came back for Etrigan. Oh, he's in everything. Yeah, he he's in everything. Same with he- Jennifer Hale. Because mm. uh, I think she played uh, Iris, uh, Barry Allen's wife, in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's in everything. Dee Bradley Baker, he, God, I'm like, I, I'd like to see what that guy's salary is because he must be freaking loaded. loaded. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and he's one of the few uh, voice actors in the business who actually does animal sounds. Oh, yeah, dude. He's, his voice is, uh, it, I mean, it's uh, he's like Frank Welter. Um, Frank Welter. Uh, who is uh, just... You know, in addition to being a really great voice talent, he just has an insanely wide range. Not mm-hmm. you know, not just through you know character voices, but through what he can really do and manipulate with his voice. Um, he does the voice asset. of freaking Bronx on Gargoyles. I mean, yeah. he's he's awesome. And D. Bradley Baker is actually the voice of uh, Appa and Momo from Avatar: The Last, yeah. <laughs> Last Airbender, one of my favorite series. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the uh, film was directed by Jay Olivia, who's been doing most of the. Uh, Warner Premiere slash DC Direct uh, animated movies. Yeah. He also did Dark Knight Returns, which is really fantastic. Oh, my God. He, he Freaking al- long, though. Holy shit. Uh, it, well, you know, it's totally worth it. Cause oh, the, yeah. Dark Knight Returns is an epic. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jay Olivia they, he's probably been the go-to guy for these sort of things. I mean, granted, uh, Alan Burnett and Bruce Timm are still kind of executive producing. Yeah. Uh, well, they're not kind of executive producing. They are executive yeah, producing. Yeah, and you can tell that they definitely are. Oh, having, they get it. They have huge overseas. Why aren't there more live-action DC movies like this? Can you imagine if this was a live action movie? I mean, holy! Because I remember you we've been pre- we've been preaching this for a long time, yeah, man. man. And I was watching it because you know we just we actually just got done watching the movie because you know we want to know what's going on. Yeah, we want to bone up first. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, 
John had never seen it. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> John had never seen it. I had never seen it. It's and true. Watching his reactions was just, you know, it was just oh. magic, man. Because he's just like, holy shit, this happens? Holy oh. crap, this is amazing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, not nearly as uh, ecstatic as. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, but. This is uh, this is probably one of the strongest one. I mean, the Wonder Woman one and the Arkham uh, uh, assault, Batman assault, assault on Arkham is mm-hmm. uh, pretty strong. Uh, Green Lantern it. First Flight is yeah. fantastic. All, it was the Green Lantern movie that uh, that was we, supposed to yeah. be. It's it's the Green Lantern movie we deserved. Oh, because <laughs> it's the same story, the exact same story. Pretty it's just much told better, way better, way better, incredibly man. so much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know it wasn't Ryan uh, Ryan Reynolds', Reynolds. fault. It almost said Gosling again. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Gosling is yeah. Hal Jordan in Green Lantern. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be the funniest thing if Ryan Gosling was ab- um uh fucking what, what was his name Sinestro? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan versus Ryan. Sounds like an epic rap battle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it does. (laughs) ERB, if you're listening, get on that shit. Ryan Gosling versus versus Ryan Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Yes. Oh, Oh, man. There's there's a gold mine for that. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) uh, And then a a guest uh, guest verse by Ryan (laughs) Seacrest. No, stop. (laughs) Stop. And then, and then the other two Ryans stop, and then they just start beating the shit out of Seacrest. <laughs> Bare fun. knuckle brawling. I think it's a little late now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> so, okay, Anna's reaction. What did you think of the movie? Uh, let's see, that movie is fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. Like, holy shit. <laughs> uh. I, I can't spoil anything until it comes up in the movie. Like, I completely fucked up last yeah. week with uh, Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. But, oh, man. That was just unreal. Yeah, I, I mean, it's... I, I remember popping it in. I'm like, right on. They're doing a Flash movie. Because we mm-hmm. hardly ever get to see Flash on his own sort of thing. We've seen Green Lantern. We've seen Wonder Woman. They're and now big. we have that uh, Flash series on the CW. Oh, movie. yeah, definitely. But that, but this was before it came out. Exactly. So this was, this was like the first real Flash movie to be made. Um, and fa- the fact that it was adapted from such a strong storyline from the comics mm-hmm. um, really kind of sold it. And I didn't read the comics. I, I mean, Neither I did just, I. I just kind of heard like whispers and rumors throughout it uh, through you know through the geek comic book nerds that I talked to. I remember when it was coming out, there was a an ad in one of the free comic book day comics that I had picked up that year, and they were uh, setting up for the Flashpoint Paradox uh, event. And they were selling action figures out of the back of the comic. Cool. There was the uh, uh, Flashpoint Batman. They had Cyborg. They had Wonder Woman, and they had Flash himself. Oh, that's awesome! It was the action figures looked really cool. That's that's, <laughs> that's tits, man. Uh, uh, but I remember what, just sitting down and watching this thing because uh, <clears throat> I, I was completely unexpe- uh, um, unprepared for it because. I, I mean, you know, as a comic book new, I was just looking like, oh my god, this has happened, this has happened. I, very much the same reaction that you did. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, in, I mean, I've seen pretty much, uh, I think the only DC animated movie, uh, original movie that I haven't seen is Batman vs. Robin. Mm-hmm. It's the only one I haven't uh, sat down and caught down to check. But out of all of them, Flashpoint remains my favorite, and it's going to be a really hard job for these guys to top it. Cause... You know who they have doing the voice of Dollmaker in Batman vs. Robin, by the way? Oh, who? Weird Al Yankovic. No! Yeah! <laughs> it's fucked Oh, oh. oh man, now I got Oh, shit, I gotta get on in this stuff, man. Because, <laughs> <laughs> after all, what I mean, we, there's no way we're going to get it in the theaters, so, you know, to yeah. get off on the DC characters, so... Might as well get it on direct video. Do it. Yeah. So let, why don't we actually do it and start the show? All right. Okay. So, so we are just about to hit play on uh, Flashpoint here, and yeah, starting and now, now we are. Hang on. Oh, yep. Yeah, it's it's going. Yeah. It, um. So 
it, it, and can, now we're seeing the Warner Brothers shield coming up it, yep. it, on the red background. That's mm-hmm. a really cool thing. Yep, that's well, that's what they kind of do for the animation. So if you guys want to look, just in the description, just hit the little sync button, and you can just start the movie. And because you know, if you don't want to hear us bullshit through it, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so here we got Young Barry Allen. Now the name drop I thought was a little forced, but you know what? Fuck yeah, it. yeah, it just. The, the it's just it's just those little dialogue moments. Yeah, it's one of those things that are, it's like eh. I think I think it it could work if you say both names, mm-hmm. but you got to sell it. it yeah. needs well, cuz I th- don't think it's necessary because the target audience is us comic book needs. If it was like a live action movie, I'll I'll ride behind that because yeah, right. I mean, that's for general audiences and shit like that, but um uh, this, I th- but just that little moment because you know we're comic book geeks. But right, I really love how the very first shot is Barry running, mm-hmm. and uh, and the-, the transition of him just running is a really strong one that that, mm-hmm. that really sells this one. Yep, and uh, I also really love the little speech that they give because you know they. Normally, when you have like a two two and a half hour runtime, you really have to have some leg room to get into this th- stuff. And even though it was pretty forced, mm-hmm. it's it still fit, and it really gets drives oh, yeah. home later. And speaking of driving home, holy shit! Yeah, holy shit! I mean, what a dark turn! I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, who's who's the asshole who just smashes the cake? I mean, really? Well, I mean, I mean, he killed. Uh, that could have been in the struggle, but as you yeah, were talking about the transitions here, yeah. This one coming up, and boom, boom. That's mm. that. That's an awesome. That's and he's still standing there. I mean, that's just devastating. I mean, that's and you know what? That's one of the great things about animation. It's stuff like that you really can't control. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a, just like a. <laughs> it's already the movie. Already, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're like what? Uh, we are uh, not two, even three two, minutes in. We're two two minute two two minute and fourteen seconds in. And shit is already getting real. It's mm-hmm. it's already dark and brutal. <clears throat> and so, yeah, and, and isn't it interesting how many DC characters are named Nora? Nora Freeze. Nora! <laughs> <laughs> so much. If your name is Nora, and you're, you're your D- days are numbered. In the DC universe, your days, yeah, you're, <laughs> you've got it bad. Thankfully, Nora Freeze made it out okay. Mm. You know, in the end, even though Victor Freeze got really fucked oh, up. <laughs> <laughs> And now here we got uh, Jennifer Hale as uh, Iris, Iris Iris Allen, who's uh, actually married to Flash at this point, which, Mm -hmm. you know, because, again, they're... they're... Well, you could very easily do, uh, oh, I liked the the logo there. Yeah. yeah. You could very (laughs) easily do uh, uh, an origin story with the Flash, Mm -hmm. but it's not needed here. Mm Mm-mm. You that's, can pick it up. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what some of these superhero movies nowadays, they feel like they have to tell the origin so they can finally get into the adventure. Like, dude, we're living in an age where comic book geeks are like the dominant species of the freaking planet, dude. Mm. So let's you know, just go right into the adventures. Go, adapt from the comics, man. You know, honestly, uh, when I was watching this the first time, my immediate thought when he was tran- uh, changing into his costume was I wonder if there are any other characters in the DC comic, DC comic universe who have just sat there while he's changing and are just like, I've seen your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, uh, it's such an asshole move, but you have to wonder. Uh, well, speaking of wonder, I bet he's done it with Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, we did not need to take that turn. Uh, we've got Mirror Master and Heat Wave here. Uh, I don't remember what the uh, tornado dude is. Oh, that's Top. Top? Oh. Yeah, yeah, His thing's like, you know, because Flash spins around real fast, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's supposed to be that sort of thing. He's kind of, they they really have to scrape the bottom of the barrel for the rogues gallery for these kind of movies, well, man. and that's the thing. Flash didn't really, never has really had the strongest set of supervillains. No, I mean, well, to comic book geeks, they're like, oh yeah, these guys are heavy players, like Captain Boomerang, like we see right here. Right, yeah. I mean, he's de- he's heavy into the Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, for comic book geeks, oh yeah, they, they're definitely uh, high up there. Yeah. But as far as general audience goes, can you imagine walking into like, what the, what the fuck? Captain Boomerang? Mm-hmm. This is bullshit, man. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I think the only real villain you can kind of get away with is uh, uh, Professor Zoom, or you know, just Zoom or uh, the Reverse Flash, right? Because you know, if you're dealing with one speedster, might as well just play with the other. 
um, and it's easy. You know, he's got the uh, um, uh, opposite color yeah, scheme he's, going he's on. Yeah, he's got the reverse so, flash thing there. So, I mean, that's for a general audience, that sort of thing would be okay. Um, but as far as, like, bringing in Captain Cold, I mean, they'll be like, what the fuck is Mr. Freeze doing in here? Mm. <laughs> you know, the thing and that... speaking of Professor Zoom, there he is. But the thing that say. I appreciate about Flash, though, is that unlike any other superhero, he actually uses the first and last names of his rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. He doesn't use Mirror Master as, uh, as his, uh, as his address. It's... Uh, Mirror Master's name. It, it's not the trickster, it's Mark. Yeah, which I, you know, I'm actually sensing that's a trope that is really pr- more prevalent in uh, uh, modern superhero movies just because, you know, when you're shouting out Mirror Master or Joker, it's, well, Joker's Joker is not. But <laughs> there, if, well, I was just thinking he doesn't have like a, a real identity. But if right. he, it, like, Two Face, you fiend, you know, that's yeah. that's like really campy. But when you're yeah. talking to him like, you need help, Harvey. That's more grounded. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you also feel for the actual character himself, and it just doesn't become like a stock villain of the week sort of thing. But I, that, but that's the thing. Flash was doing that way before. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a good trope that followed through. I mean, mm-hmm. I, think, I, I wonder if that, It's a strong choice. I, I wonder if, uh, you know, that, that kind of decision among directors for modern superhero movies came out of the Flash, or that just was like, hey, let's just call them by their names. Make it humanize them. I, I don't... think it might have come out of the flash, honestly. I, well, I don't know. You, know, you never know. You never know, but you know these things are up to debate. Any yeah. any super big time superhero directors out there? Let, let us, us know. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And here we go, Kevin oh, fucking Conroy. Fuck yeah, as Batman, oh. dude. You know, actually, I heard he was like the first one to be signed on this movie because, yeah. like, way back when this movie wasn't even you know drawn or just ba- like barely written, mm-hmm. it turns out Kevin Conroy just kind of dropped at one of the conventions saying, yeah, I just finished my lines for a new uh, Flash movie. Oh, the, what is it? Flashpoint Paradox. Right on! Can you tell us about it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nathan Fillion. Yes, Nathan Fillion as Green Lantern. He, dude, let's just, can we just get Nathan Fillion to be in a live action Green Lantern movie. Well, he actually, is. funny thing is, he actually wants to do Booster Gold. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, oh, man. I can't choose between them. Can see, he just, I, I, he I just play to... both? Can he? <laughs> see, I honestly want to see him do Booster Gold and then have Alan Tudyk as Skeet. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, please. Warner Brothers, <laughs> listen to our please. We are here to, we want this stuff. We will pay lots of money for this. We will pay through the fucking nose for this shit. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, this part right uh, right here I love because where they just kind of go, uh, they separate (laughs) and isolate, you know, all the uh, other villains or the Mm -hmm. rogues to disarm the bombs that uh, uh, Professor Zoom just got. And I love the way that they each of them actually diffuse them Um, because, you know, that's a I think there's like, what, four? Yeah, four villains here. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have to get creative in each and different ways. So Cyborg here has his like uh, nanotech because, you know, he's nanotech. And then Captain Cold, <laughs> I love this. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd suck it, squeeze it in if I were you. D- there's, <laughs> there's one thing that bothers me about the uh, art style of this one. What's that? The modeling on the female faces. Yeah, they look like Barbies. Well, and if you notice, like even the males, like their heads are unnaturally small. Yeah, just a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, but you know, geeky nitpick. The, the story is right. really, really strong. It's gonna get good. This is my favorite one. <laughs> Waiting's the worst part. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so earnest about it. It's so that's dude. That's, I'm just going to hold my hands like this. And Batman's diffusing it in, in space. space. Of course, he's Batman. Because you know why not? Uh, but I love how uh, Wonder Woman actually freezes, just takes the gun from him and freezes it. Because you know uh, that's actually a tactic that a, mm. that SWAT teams use in real yeah. bomb, uh, bomb t- uh, diffusion tactics. Because the wires actually freeze and you stop the circuitry. Mm. But, you know, because this is like future technology, she freezes it for a second and that kind of fucks it up and gives her just enough time to blow yeah. it right there. <clears throat> Big debate. Um, yeah, but... Um, <laughs> and then this I thought was really clever with Aquaman. He just has like a, a uh, million microbes, microbes yeah. just eat the wiring and then he crushes it in his hand. That's that's actually really cool because mm-hmm. one Aquaman is so underrated. And in here, you fear this motherfucker. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I love this. You know, with all of the broken belts here, though, it's just, I'm surprised nobody's pulling their pants off. 
<laughs> oh man, Superman. I really, it, see, I still love Superman. Most people kind of like Superman's dumb. He's boring. Oh, we've seen his origin story like a million times. He's a y'all powerful and yeah. When he's done right, and he's done right so few times. Yeah, the thing is, is that Superman is the outsider, but he wants to be like us. So I think that the best Superman stories just challenge his humanity. Mm. Yeah, man. Uh, it, well, either that, or he re- he he may still be like the savior of us all. You know, the uh, the immigrant from the stars who uh, is bound to save us all and teach us all to. Tr- uh, know what it means to truly be a hero, mm-hmm. but it's it, um, to still have him as a character with vulnerabilities and issues. Yeah, is tough. Cause it, I think yeah. the only time that it's really ever worked is, of course, is with Chris Reeves, but also on the Superman animated series and Justice mm. League. Yes, those are the only real times that it's r- come into fruition. Because I'm like, yeah, you don't like. Why do you like Superman? I'm like, because I know the right versions. Yeah, what have you been reading? New Fifty Two. <laughs> He's a dick in New Fifty Two. <laughs> Um, and and, sa- and sadly, the because uh, there's a sequel to this uh, movie right here. It's called Justice League War, and they t- model Superman off the New Fifty Two, and I hated it. You know, uh, looking at the uh, facial structure of, of Thrawn there, yeah. I uh, have you been watching the CW Flash series? No, I haven't. Again, the only the only show that I've been really keeping up with, with is uh, Gravity Falls, and that's because me and my sister kind of bond that way. Okay, if you <clears throat> do end up watching the Flash series. Look for that same facial structure through the throughout the show. Okay. Well, uh-huh. You'll be like, no, <laughs> no. Yep. And uh, yeah, here's the title drop: Flashpoint paradox. paradox. And I love how the the paradox thing comes through. That's... Now, originally, the comic book title is just Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. It, not Flash Flashpoint paradox. That's the th- that's the thing that that is a thing that has been added here. Yeah. So, we had our nice rousing start, and now we're finally getting into the premise. Flash wakes up one morning, and everything's wrong. The headline reads, World Faces Armageddon. Uh, Elastic Kid, not Elastic Man, but Elastic Kid has been murdered. Uh, Elongated. Uh, Elongated. Fucking. Sorry, folks. (laughs) Tara, I'm a... Yeah, I know. Burn me at the stake for not getting... Burn me, non-believer! (laughs) Burn him! And here we go, Citizen Cold. Or yeah, Citizen, Citizen Cold. cold. The, the, uh, right there and then, you're like, something's up. Yeah. Something's up, man. Because, uh, <clears throat> um, again, what, watching this movie, half, really the fun of it is watching to uh, what happens when Flash wakes up and everything is wrong. Yeah. To see what happens to the characters and what happens to the world as a result is just... That's the fun of this movie, and mm-hmm. that's why you should never spoil this movie. If you're no. if you're still if you haven't seen this movie and you're still watching, <laughs> ouch! Yeah, if you're still watching this movie, take it out right now. And <laughs> holy shit, mom! <laughs> <laughs> and, and she does look like she's actually aged well. Too. Oh yeah, I know exactly. You know, um, <clears throat> with, uh, although I'm actually kind of curious as to how exactly he was really able to recognize his mother despite you know being aged yeah because you know th- things happen over time and you i mean you're like because you see people i mean this is a city where anything can just just about happen but mm-hmm. yeah you know, i guess it's you know a son's instinct that sort of thing because you know they're obviously very close because right. mother and son that sort of bullshit but <clears throat> yeah one again one more minor ne- ne- geeky nitpick right hmm <clears throat> and I also love how uh, you know the end of the world can't stop stop me from my birthday happening. <laughs> uh, usually it's the other way around, but again, this is a really touching moment. Mm. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> I love uh, uh, this uh, line coming up, where is um, where the we have a uh, and again now she mentions war going on, mm-hmm. and you're like, dude, what the fuck is going on, man? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and yeah, that, that what, uh, where she's like, you're, are you gay? <laughs> you're gay. You have something to hide. Oh, you're gay. That's okay. I love you. That's a, that was a nice uh, little touch. I love, that was a nice little touch. That was, mm. that was sweet. <laughs> and, uh, now he, she gives him the big, give, big reveal. I'm the Flash. Who's the Flash? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They call him the Streak. Uh, oh, boogity boogity! Oh, gee. Actually, can you, mom? Can you imagine you're uh, saying I'm the Flash, 
It's like, I really don't want to know what you've been doing on your weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, here we are, and, Gotham City, Wayne Casino. Now yeah, here's and, and look at the the way that the sky is. It's yeah, very animated. Series. Now right here, this is the part where I was like, okay, this is not Batman. Yeah, I always saw that. I'm like, wait, Batman with gun? That's not Batman. That is not Batman. Right. And uh, it, <laughs> uh and here I'm like, is that Harley Quinn? Uh, wait, no, that can't be. Yeah, she does. She doesn't do the whole. A ball on a stick thing, or yeah, well, you find <laughs> out string. you find out that they're actually yo-yos, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do like that. Uh, that's a really cool character design, just like an mm-hmm. alternate universe sort of thing. Yeah, um, and I like the way that his cape spikes up too. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool the, touch. the shoulder pads. Yeah, that's just like another like gothic element that goes in, but. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I, and what, the five o'clock shadow too is interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it, well, you can kind of tell that you know he's just fucking doesn't give a rat's oh, ass no. about he anyone or anything or about himself or anything that i thought was pretty brutal right mm. here um but uh <clears throat> no I, I my only quarrel is why is bat why is this guy how is he still able to function if he's like like 60 or 70 years old sheer People will find a way man. sheer will sheer will now this is where i really got scared of batman again yeah <laughs> uh well you can still talk and he, this line right here, let me help you get it off. Jesus, Jesus fuck. Christ. <laughs> and that, sh- this shot right here, dude, uh, that's fucking scary, dude. Yeah. And I also love the little touch with Judge Dent instead of lawyer. Uh, he's not a DA. He's mm-hmm. the judge. Yeah. Um, and You know, there is one thing that I appreciate about this uh, design for Batman as well. His, uh, did you notice that his pants are actually cargo pants? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally did. You, you know, you're sensing he's much more of a green beret than a ninja. Yeah. Um, which again, that's another really fascinating fact because Batman's always been a soldier of uh, of crime. Yeah, a, a, a soldier, soldier against, against crime. crime. Uh, but here it's taken to a really dark turn. Yeah, Just, it, it's 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 gotten to a point where the Batman that we would know is I. Uh, Ten steps behind what this guy is. Yeah, there's actually a line in there that I really, really loved. Uh, is like, you used to be the James Bond of superheroes. What turned you into the, the Unabomber? Mm-hmm. I love that line. That's a great... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now here, here we have Cyborg, who is like he, uh, way bigger than normal. Like, he's oh, yeah, like yeah. Seven, like seven, eight feet tall. And actually, in the Lego Batman 3 game, that's the Cyborg that you play as. Oh, he, yeah, because this is like... That's, a, his, that's his giant form. Yeah, because this is obviously a New 52 version, because, you know, uh, Flashpoint Paradox kind of fucked with the time stream. Yeah. Um, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but it was enough to change some of the looks of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and here we have the Shazam kids. This, I thought, was a really fascinating alternative idea. Instead of just, you know... Just Billy Batson. Yeah, Billy Batson there, you know, he kind of like, oh, he feels bad because, you know, Batman's not short of hearing. Also, uh, the thing that I found interesting also was the fact that Sandman is one of the good guys. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But the fact that, you know, uh, as you know, Shazam is actually uh, an acronym for all the different strengths of uh, heroes of myth and legend. Yeah. And instead of all being transferred into Billy Batson, it's transferred through seven kids, which is awesome. That's an mm-hmm. uh, that's a great idea, man. Yeah, that is a story I would love to see. Oh, right, but you know, shit doesn't quite end well with them. Mm. <laughs> and now I wonder why Batman has always been described as the best tactician on the planet, but he, um, you know, none of the... Uh, where Where's the actual military? <laughs> you know? That's it, it. It just feels weird that you know Batman has always been described in the DC animated universe uh, or DC universe as Oh, whole. the end is nigh. Yeah, that was a nice little touch from Watchmen. Uh, yeah, there's another Watchmen reference towards the end. I'll actually point it out it's for you. It's very Alan Moore esque. Well, well, just there's just kind of a couple of visual tropes that that kind of appear, but I'll tell you when the other one comes up. Mm. But uh, yeah, here we have uh, him, Barry Allen coming up to um, Iris, and it turns out she's already married and has a fucking kid, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine? First, you find out that you know there's a war going on. You lost your superpowers. Your mom's back, and now you know the woman that you've been married to for fucking I don't know how long. Whatever, right? Is it, it, it's it's all bad now. <laughs> this shot coming up right here. Well, um, traffic and going into Gotham City, heavy stuff. But this right here, Flash stuck in traffic. 
Do you know how fucking terrible yeah, that is? It's like, oh, I man. used to have superpowers, man. man. I could be here in uh, literally a blink of an eye, but I have to I could be through. here in a hot second, but yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And here we got Wayne Manor looking way more depressing and oh, derelict yeah. well, than usual. And the I, wonder where, I wonder where Alfred went. I don't know. Dude, I wonder if he just like up and... I wonder if Thomas Wayne was like, fuck off. Unless it was uh, Martha. Oh, gee. Dude, that can you? Be, oh, oh. Ah, <laughs> DC, shit. please tell more stories from this universe. It's uh, really interesting. It is, man. It, you know what? Just do like what Marvel did back in like the seventies. Elseworlds. Do, or I was just thinking the What If series because mm. my uh, my Godfather had like a t- shit ton of the What If comics because he used to collect them all the time. Oh man. Um, and I used to and read them. And here he is. Yep. Oh, uh, this is this I thought was really cool. And again, there was that back uh, earlier. There was that. One line about the Unabomber. I thought that yeah. Was really, that uh, was really cool. <clears throat> but you, could you notice how, uh, like, derelict the cave is? Like, how really simple it is? Yeah, it's not it's, very high-tech at all. Or, and it's really unkept, too. Like, liquor mm-hmm. bottles everywhere. And here's where we get the big reveal, man. Bruce Wayne was the one who was murdered in the alley, and Thomas Wayne lived. Dude! He, he what a, is the Batman! And I, But that's still such a weird thing to me, because he'd have to be, like... 80 years old right now. Something like that, yeah. Because he must have been, like, what, 30 when Bruce was killed? And so now he really, actually, his age must be, like, 60. Yeah. How is he con- continuing on as, like, Batman like this? Well, uh, by uh, Dark Knight Return standards, Bruce is, like, 50. Yeah, and so, I know. Well, he's 55. I mean, that, yeah. that's what it was in his obituary at the end, you know, spoilers. Right. But, um... It's been it's been a <clears throat> hot day or two. Yeah, it's still, it's still, man. He was and he retired ten years before that. He retired at yeah. age forty five. So if if he he's sixty, that's <sighs> got to be something. Here we go, dude. One woman coming out of that. Like I'm like, oh my gee, holy god. And just look at the armor too. It's 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 terrifying actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and now this I thought was really this was probably one of the darkest turns in the whole fucking movie man, this is when you can tell that the shit is really starting to hit the fan now, no but no holds are being and love, barred and i love the uh, you know that grip that tightens our grip on the uh the lasso truth. yeah and here we have steve trevor mm-hmm. part of the resistance and on the run from the amazons killing them left and right finally gets captured by wonder woman with the lasso truth and it, you, holy shit! Oh, man. I mean, this was the man that taught her to be the ambassador of peace mm-hmm. and of the world, the one who got her off of Themyscira. Yeah, and uh, and of course here we have uh, Artemis and all the other uh, major Amazon warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, shit gets real for them too. Shit gets real for everyone in this yeah, movie. Yeah, oh god. And uh, now like I said, no holds barred. And speaking of no uh, no bars hold, held back. Here we got Wonder Woman just flat out hangs Steve Trevor and fucking kills him, dude. She, yeah. Nothing is beneath her. Yeah. She is diabolically evil. I don't know what the mm-hmm. fuck happened, but look at that gruesome death. The blood yeah. out of the mouth and then And fucking, just the, the foaming at the eyes. Jesus. Jesus, man. Oh, man. And here's a, another really awesome bat and scary interrogation moment. You have, five, you have, you have nine, nine fingers, fingers left. left. <laughs> I suggest you talk. <laughs> and uh, now he's uh, talking about, uh, yep, breaks another mm-hmm. one right there. <clears throat> yeah, it's... Mm. I, I, I really... Uh, you know, actually all the old incarnation of, like, uh, late old career Batman, those are the ones I scare the most. Oh, yeah. Because they're because they've got just, like, balls-out experience nothing held back and especially you know these these type of characters they just get really bitter the more mm-hmm. they age and oh, so yeah. old batman is one batman that i don't want to run into yeah either old batman <laughs> jesus christ man oh, just, yeah, his fingers mm-hmm. i i've actually had a, a finger broken like that it sucks because like you, you can't actually you know uh, it's it's straighten it out yeah anymore. it's it's actually kind of amazing how well barry mallon is just walking it off yeah like, he's he like, whatever. flinch when he picks that up. Just, yeah. I would flinch the hell out. Yeah, whatever. You know, I got a broke. Oh, it, it is just a flesh it's wound. wound. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Werner Herzog. Now, <laughs> Werner Herzog's Justice League. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be. Oh, Did you see Werner Herzog's Ant Man? 
No. Oh my gosh, I gotta show you this later. Oh it's amazing. man, I can't Sh- wait. Check it out, folks. Uh, uh, go on YouTube. Werner Herzog's Ant Man. Fucking hilarious. But anyway, the thing about Flashpoint Paradox. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing actually, the thing about right here is uh, when uh, Barry Allen's talking about all this alternate universe stuff. And now, why does why does Thomas Wayne like so quickly kind of like all right, you're making sense. Dude, no. Mm-hmm. Fucking punch that guy, drug him, and send him to Arkham. Yeah. It, well, he, he does actually make that point. All of it. You'd be amazed. This mon- world this monsters can create. That's scary. Yeah. Jesus. You you know he's seen hell. No, oh, but... And, and you, you and you really don't know the extent of the hell until mm-hmm. a little later in the movie, but holy fuck, that was a great reveal. Mm-hmm. But again, why is he believing him? Really, why? Because... It's, okay, Batman is one of the smartest men in all of the DC universe. I think at this point it's because he's desperate. He wants to believe in something, which is something that uh, the Bruce Wayne Batman wouldn't do necessarily. But I don't know, man, because Thomas Wayne is one who's who will murder. Yeah. So uh, w- I, the fact he, that he's going through with it, he, he'd be m- more than less likely than Bruce if you think about it. Ah, uh, Ron yeah. Perlman. Okay, Ron Perlman back as fucking Deathstroke. Deathstroke. Slayed from the Teen Titans, man. And mm-hmm. Stephen Bloom as a really diabolical Lex Luthor. Because, yeah. you know, Lex Luthor isn't in this movie a whole lot. You know, again, if, you, again, if you're watching this, you had better seen this movie. So, yeah. no spo- no holding back on spoilers. Um, but Lex Luthor isn't in, a whole, in this movie a whole lot, but they give him the most diabolical voice. I mean, Stephen yeah. Bloom is just evil. He was actually... I think he's done... Uh... Lex before on something else. He might have, one. but I know he was uh, really famous from at least for me uh, as the uh, the big villain. Um, I, f- I fucking forget his name. Uh, the big villain in the uh, the first season of Legend of Korra. Mm. Yeah, I forget. I fucking um, it, a, a something. It's been a while, folks. I'm sorry. It's, I I really should know this one because I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, the uh, Legend of Korra. I haven't actually finished it because got shit to do yeah podcasts and stuff but whatever <laughs> it, it, just leave it in the comments below and then burn us later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here we go and here we are now well why are you complaining it's a free show <laughs> what, whatever and now here we okay here we got uh the uh the battleship being attacked by uh, uh one or the uh the atlanteans mm-hmm. and fucking people get killed left and right in this yeah, battle it, man i mean it's just brutal no mm-hmm. heart and uh <clears throat> I think uh, that right now Lex Luthor and Deathstroke are actually on a mission to kind of find out because there, there's a so rumor. Arjun du- just died, yep. and so did uh, so did who? Uh, that guy? Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he, I, he, he's, he's not. Good. He's not getting back up again. Here's <laughs> vibe. Is he dead? Huh? <laughs> but um, uh, he, he, yeah, Lex Luthor and Deathstroke are on a mission to find. Apparently, uh, he killed Dead Tom. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Everyone dies, and here's Aqualad k- killing the God. shit out of people. But uh, Lex Luthor and Deathstroke are trying to find him. Uh, apparently, there's a, a major weapon of mass destruction. Here's Clayface, oh. and yes, um, mm. yeah. And so uh, they're on they're on a mission to find the rumored weapon so they can destroy it before they wipe out all pl- life on the planet. Yeah, because um, you know who's better to do it than the mind of Lex Luthor and Deathstroke, the, uh, the Terminator. There's Orm. Yep, <clears throat> and who we got? Uh, is that Cheetah? Yeah, that's Cheetah. Okay, because, you know, her costumes are weird. I, th- I swear, she was like an, another Atlantean that I don't really know about. But, um, yeah, they're on a mission to find him, and uh, apparently they walked right into a <laughs> yeah. fucking trap, dude. Because, dude, why, if you're going, uh, a battleship against Aquaman will not end well. No. Uh, he, again, Aquaman, uh, they give Aquaman so much crap in the comics. You know, like, oh, you know, you sent him out in the middle of a desert. He's so useless. Oh, he's the lamest villain. He has all the powers of SpongeBob. Boy, blah, 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 blah. But no, dude, this guy is brutal. Wh- dude, Aquaman owns 70% of the planet. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. He's scary. And now here we got Black uh, fucking Mantis, fucking dude. Black Manta. Uh, what the hell, man? And he just he kills, kills Deathstroke, man. Oh, man. I mean, Black Mantis, the number one... Uh, Aquaman villain working, working for s- Aquaman. That's side by side, man. And, and that's, that's the thing that got me through the whole movie was just, he's working with Aquaman. What the actual fuck? <laughs> right? And I hear that. I love this. This is a really Lex Luthor moment. At least I know I was right. Yeah. And it, right here, no prisoners. 
phone just kills him flat out. Mm-hmm. Lex Luthor is dead. There are no questions about that. Uh, and so, uh, if I ever wanted to uh, like show off the power of Aquaman, I show him this movie because, yeah. dude, Aquaman fucking scares the shit out of me, dude. Mm. Uh, I can is, understand why, oh, right, dude? It, it, and I, I really wish that people would stop ragging on him because, like, Robot Chicken did it to no end. Man. Yeah, but it's Robot uh, Chicken. Yeah, but they're, they kind of have a, a license to do that because they're strictly satire. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it it is kind of funny to see some of the shit that they pull. Like, <laughs> I really did laugh the one where, like, come on on board the invisible jet, I'm coming, boom, <laughs> and then all the because it's Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Superman, and they it's like we uh, first one over there to to, to the uh, the Metro Tower because. <laughs> Uh, who can fly, you know, because we can fly. He's like, fine, I'll just swim. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, right here, uh, man, uh, Barry Allen's being just, I, I still can't the believe. The architecture of uh, Wayne Manor in this one is very interesting to me because rather than the usual gothic architecture that we see, mm-hmm. it's very much more informed by the Parthenon. Mm-hmm. It's the thing. I just think. That, I mean, later in the movie, it doesn't look like that. And yeah, but, uh, holy fuck, dude! Here, Barry, he's on fucking fire. Barry and the, the screams are pretty horrific too. Yeah. But Barry Allen, man, is trying to recreate it. But I just can't fathom how Thomas Wayne is still able to get back the, by this guy like so, for so long. Mm. Holy shit, dude! I mean, you thought Harvey Dent looked bad in The Dark Knight? Shit. He's extra crispy. Because <laughs> seriously, extra crispy. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Break me off some of that fried chicken. It just <laughs> <laughs> some of that fried berry. You're you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and check it out, dude. We got Obama. Flat out, Obama is in yeah. this movie. And that's not, that's something that interests me to no end with uh, DC. They're always very informed by the politics of their day. Like, mm-hmm. Dark Knight Returns has Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Um, and uh, even, like, if you read the uh, um, uh, Civil War comics for Marvel, they clearly had George W. Bush in, in the White House and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, you know, welcome back, Cap. It clearly modeled after George W. Bush. But, you know, here's, that's that's a nice touch. They even got a really good voice actor to impersonate him. Mm. <clears throat> I think it's. I think he looks a bit too gaunt, but yeah. Yeah, well, I guess again it's, it's stylistic, and, and it's part of, and it kind of fits with the rest of the story. Yeah, all right, yeah. Now here, man, this is uh, where shit gets real, where we find out all the alternative stuff that happened uh, in the little time boom that Flash created when he went back in time. Mm-hmm. Um, right here, we uh, we've seen this imagery before. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's me, a rocket ship coming out of the plains of Kansas, but plot twist. Doesn't it misses. Cra- and where does it land? In the middle of Metropolis, Metropolis. and blo- boom, blows up half of the city. Yeah, it, it's devastating, flat, man. Flat out destroys half of that, half of Metropolis. What a want, what isn't that a nice welcome for mm. a Kryptonian? And here we got uh, the uh, the Atlanteans washing up on the shores of Themyscira, and uh, here we got Wonder Woman, and they form an alliance, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. That's a, can you imagine what they would have really done had shit not hit the fan? Absolutely. I, I, w- I actually wonder where that would have been uh, taken. Um, and as a matter of fact, how the hell did they find Themyscira? Because isn't it supposed to be protected by the gods? So, yeah, you'd think that. Yeah, you know, Atlantean powers. Yeah. This makes for a really good storytelling. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> right here, man, we got an affair going on. Oof. And that's pretty brutal. Uh, it, you know, they're really quick to you know get in the sack. How about mm. that? Oh, and who knows how many months this uh, this alliance lasted anyway. And here, now, uh, what I really think is effective about this scene is no dialogue. Yeah. None. They just give each other looks. It's look. just straight. And, and, and because it's also a flashback, it kind of fits with the... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, flashback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Very punny. Yeah. But it fits with the, uh, the film form that it's going for. And here we got the... Ap- we don't see the fight, just the uh, bloody aftermath. And uh, speaking of bloody, dude, oh, yeah. this shit right here where she not just doesn't don the crown, but she holds up her head. I mean, I was like, all right, dude, she, Wonder Woman won, got the crown, that sort of thing. But I was like, dude, is that is that a little bit much? Mm. I can't believe I'm asking this, but is this a little bit much? And here we got probably the most, the one, the one flashback, uh, alternative uh, flashback for the this timeline. This one scared me the most. Mm. Because, you know, we obviously see that Bruce Wayne's been gunned down by the guy in the alley. 
and that Thomas Wayne beat, literally beat the fucking life out of him. Mm-hmm. And Martha Wayne is obviously devastated. Both of them are very uh, devastated because you know it's a child, man. Yeah, it's a. Th- I mean, how the hell did Joe Chill have the guts to kill a kid but leave their parents alive? Mm-hmm. Especially one as big as Thomas Wayne. But right here, dude, this transition from the her sobbing and into the laughter. <sighs> And it That's reveals the Joker. Uh huh. I mean, I was I was actually remember watching this for the first time, and I hear that laugh, and I was like, "This is no, way too scary. No, this no, is way no. too scary." Jesus <laughs> Christ! I mean, can you imagine the anniversaries? Mm. I mean, fuck, dude. They, God, <laughs> they had a I freaking mean, annulment. I mean, That's I, that. <laughs> considered that a divorce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But man, that's gotta be. And now looking back, you know, you'd be amazed at the the monsters that this world can create. Mm -hmm. That's got even more resonance. Yeah, that's just gravitas. All gravitas. I remember there was a moment in the comics that uh, sadly didn't make it into this movie. But I'm kind of glad because you know I don't want to stay too focused on Batman because you know Mm -hmm. Batman gets Batman's a fucking whore lately uh, for DC. He he gets a lot of story time. A lot. He's the flagship character, and it kind of bugs me a little bit because I I still love Superman. But anyway, uh, the one scene from the comics that was omitted was a a moment where Bruce and it's a one year anniversary thing where Thomas and Martha Wayne as Batman and the Joker actually call a truce for one day mm-hmm. and visit the site where his their son was gunned down. For one year, they ha- only once a year they call a truce yeah. and visit. And I thought that was a really sweet moment. And an, a, a wonderful... Again, more stories from this universe because it's really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, although minus It's the, a very what if. Although minus the war between... Um, yeah. Just because we need we, we need everyone to live through Mar- Armageddon, we can't have Armageddon fucking everything up and mm-hmm. stopping the story. We need the story to go on. The show must go on. And uh, right here, we actually heard uh, from Lex Luthor and Deathstroke earlier that uh, um, Captain Adam was sent overseas to stop uh, Aquaman and Wonder Woman from. But he dis- disappeared. Yeah, mysteriously disappeared. No backup. No nothing. No word from him or anything. Um, but uh, we find out in this scene right here uh, what exactly uh, happened. happened. He's yeah. in in the bowels of uh, Aquaman's uh, flagship or his uh, um, the you know the capital ship. Mm-hmm. Um, in the center of it, heart of it, they have captured fucking Captain Adam, and they're using his pure energy within to create a doomsday weapon, a last yeah. minute re- um, suicide, uh, revenge weapon. If the uh, Atlanteans do oh, just, are defeated, the re- the repeating of this, yeah, I know. But if the uh, Atlanteans are defeated, they can always unleash this and wipe out all organisms on the planet. I mean, mm-hmm. that dude, what a great! What, the stakes have rarely been this high. Mm-hmm. And here we are again, dude. Just starting again. And, uh, and here's another weird nitpick that I, I love. That yeah. <laughs> he just takes a drink, like, oh, this is an interesting show. <laughs> but um. Why is, again, why is Batman still going through with this? Because this is like I, a real... I still think it's because he wants to be hopeful about something. He's he's had so much shit dished out at him. Mm, I guess so, but I, I you know, at this point I would think, like, of, of all the crap that poor Thomas Wayne has gone through at this point, I'm like, he wouldn't give a fuck about anyone anymore. He would just care about himself and, and uh, to... Then why would he have the mask on? Yeah, good point. Um... <clears throat> I love this moment right here. I told you I was fast. Yeah. And then pulls out the liquor, the flask. <laughs> thought that was great. Oh. Uh, and here we have Dana Delaney as Lois Lane, man. And I love the line, my battery's about to die yeah, and I'm no, about no. to join it soon. That's, <laughs> dude, that, that's, pe- that's Pulitzer Prize winning Lois Lane. Yeah. And apparently very fit for, you know, doing jumps and running like that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, she she's she's a field reporter. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder uh, Steve Trevor finds her really hot. <laughs> I want that headset. That's really cool. Uh, I know, right? Can you imagine? Oh, my God. I can only imagine the kind of war, uh, war footage she gets on that thing. Holy mm. shit. And well, here, now, this... Well, not only that, but you, can you imagine the uh, ramifications for that kind of yeah, uh, yeah. headset? You could do almost anything. Yeah. And right here, uh, this is a beast that we've uh, obviously seen before from the comics that 
is uh, the guardian of the underworld for, mm-hmm. guarded by Hades. Now, it's this, Cerberus. Now, this suggests are the Amazons actually in league with Ares? Either using Ares his, or Hades. Using his dark magic to, you know, unleash further atroci- atrocities against the Atlanteans? Because if they are, that's a really cool thing. And, but they don't address it. And I kind of wish that they do because I want to see more characters. I want to see more. <laughs> I, uh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so we have... Okay, hear me out here. All right, you have th- this universe, right? Yeah, yeah, And you have Vic Sage, the question. Oh! <laughs> trying to piece it all together, seeing where everything went wrong, and then he hits it. It's Ares. He goes to the underworld, or Orpheus style. Uh-huh. And just as he figures it out, yeah. Ares taps him on the shoulder... Jeez, man. See, that would have been a really cool subplot. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of, you know, more heroes... And that yeah. would explain it. Yeah. And here comes more... Uh, they just flat out killed uh, Artemis. Because um, mm. uh, Professor Zoom just came in and stopped him. And I really love that moment where uh, she was just kind of holding holding her hands up like, I didn't do anything. And here we got Etrigan and the Demon, man! <laughs> so many wonderful... <laughs> Can you imagine if this w- really was like a live action movie? Like, oh my mm-hmm. god, they got e- Etrigan and the Demon. They got this. They got that. This is awesome. I mean, it, uh, if this was a live action movie and you showed this back in like the 90s, they'll be like, this is the most amazing thing ever! Mm-hmm. Holy fuck, dude! And uh, even they got Grifter, man. Yeah. <laughs> Grifter. <laughs> oh, oh. And, What's up? And then uh, after that with uh, Ares, mm-hmm. you have uh, the Spectre oh, just yes. towering. Yes. I'm, I'm surprised Something that... about this isn't right. You know, either that or I would have been like, uh, Spectre's just there to kind of just watch. Unless, uh, what what happens is, uh, after this, you have the Spectre reverse the Armageddon. Maybe, or either that or he doesn't even exist in this universe. He could not. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, in this universe, technically speaking, Superman doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, now, this kind of confused me right here, where he just kind of vibrates and turns the uh the costume uh the uh the exact opposite color scheme mm-hmm. did he rearrange the molecules or he might have something i mean yeah, it, it's, it's not clear yeah whatever but you know another geeky nitpick it's still a great movie and i love this line right here so i'm finally on the so that's what that feels like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh come on <laughs> Ah, oh, come on, whatever. Uh, and you know what? Actually, Nolan did this, did that before they did this movie. Yeah, but what? I still love that little gag. <clears throat> and uh, now, I'm curious as to why uh, Thomas Wayne has kept uh, the gun that killed Bruce all those years, and now decide to take it out again. Because you would think that he, um, in his character, he'd be like, "This gun was fired, and it will never be fired again." Mm. <clears throat> I vow that this gun isn't. I don't know, because they really, I, I wish that this was like a two and a half hour epic movie, mm-hmm. so they could really delve into some of the characters' minds, because a lot of it is really confusing. Yeah. And not to mention, there's very little time for Bruce and uh, Barry, to, their relationship to develop. Um, so, and, and as you saw there, uh, here's Nathan Fillon, man, is, uh, Hal Jordan again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it really, just fucking <laughs> get him to be the gr- new Green Lantern. Please. And that would be so bitchin'. He'd be perfect. And I love this line here. It's, to, why don't you show me what you've got hidden away here, and I'll show you what I can use with it. That is so him, man. Mm-hmm. He is cocky as fuck. Now, this I remember when you saw it, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's, no. Yep. Eight years ago, this ship crash landed out in the desert, and guess whose ship it was? It was fucking Avin Sur, right there. They missed his rendezvous with Avin Sur and did not become the Green Lantern that we all know. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, what surprises me though is that the ring didn't go off and choose anybody else. No, though. no. Although right here, I love this shot where it's kind of like a little mirror image. Like, yeah, this could have been you, man. Uh, and it should have been you, because mm-hmm. uh, I, I guess um, I get, I, I get, uh, it was probably one of those things where, you know, the time ripple got Hal Jordan in the wrong mindset to become Green Lantern. That might be. It m- just might be, but 
here he's finally, uh, you know, after eight years of dealing with things on his own without the ring, he's finally come out of it. Because, you know, right here he says, like, I've been waiting for something all my life and I'm for something special that no one else can do. And I think this is it. See, I think that, but that, that, the logic of uh, Hal Jordan not being right at the right time flummoxes me because there are four other lanterns. Well, again, I, I'm still saying that. From Earth. Uh, oh, okay, f- fair enough. Well. I guess. Uh, um, I mean, even Guy Gardner. Uh, well, that was the '40s, but whatever. I, the point. Uh, the point. That's Alan Scott. Oh yeah, Alan Scott. Fucking. I'm s- yes, burn me, burn me, <laughs> <laughs> burn me at the stake. Um, oh, well, yeah. Well, I need to have that as a button. Just burn me. Burn me the, at the stake. You know, well, Flash already got burned at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> burn me at the stake, and it has all of the league symbols on it. Yep. Uh, right here, uh, we have. They're trying to find Superman now, uh, the most powerful being in the DC universe, and the fact that he doesn't exist is a real yeah dude. Can, a world without Superman really is a grim world. You know, um, what's up? there is one thing that I would love to see these guys make. What's up? A Legion of Superheroes movie. One of these days, man. Just you wait. Look at that crater. Mm. Fucking holy Jesus! I mean, it, 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 you know, and you, actually, if you look at the uh, the opposite uh, universe, you really would think it's paradise compared to this. Yeah, comparatively, Holy shit, yeah, dude. I mean, like everyone is just miserable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I love how uh, Cyborg is not only like Jihugic gi- now, but he's also Jihugic. The- yes, <laughs> but he's also the uh, um, the Secretary of Defense. Mm-hmm. He's actually on government payroll. Yeah, which is a, an interesting step because in this universe he is the Boy Scout. Yeah, he's the uh, the bo- the boy wonder that everyone looks to and the one who teaches everyone to be heroes. Which is you know that's an interesting thing because mm-hmm. Cyborg always kind of gets like a backseat because you know he was from the Teen Titans, right? Moved right. to the Justice League, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a nice little upgrade. Mm-hmm. Cool thing. Um, <clears throat> oh man, I really forget. Wasn't it, was Michael B. Jordan the voice of him? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so you know the current uh, uh, Johnny Storm. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Although he, no, quite frankly, he does a much better, um, <laughs> much better cyborg. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, but that movie was fucking terrible, and I knew from the beginning. I mean, I'll I'll ride with the whole uh, um, ra- uh, racial switch with. Uh, 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 Human Torch. I'll go. Yeah, with that, that's a, go, that's an ultimate thing. I'll that go, comes right out of the comics. I'll go with that, man. Because you know when I saw Daredevil and I was like, and we saw uh, Black uh, Kingpin. Yes. Dude, my, Michael Clark Duncan knocked it out of the park for me. I know a lot of people didn't like the movie, but I thought it was amazing. Um, and, Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And so I'm not opposed to you know switching the race of uh, a character around, but man, that movie would just there was no saving grace. Mm. Thank God I never had to the. The other yeah, chops to actually go sit, sit down and watch it and waste two hours of my life. All right, so right here they're breaking into a secret underground tunnel right under Metropolis. Right, um, breaking into uh, heavy security. Now, these guards here, mm-hmm. who are they? How do you get a job for this? Do you, do, <laughs> I mean, what kind of resume do you turn in for these these kind of jobs? I mean, I know it's a skeleton um, crew, but I have an art major. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if they're like ex Green Berets, shouldn't they be doing something better than guarding shit? Well, they are. Uh, they are guarding the most powerful uh, creature on the planet. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. But even so, it's like, how do you get that job? How do you really get that job? I mean, I know like Secret Service agents are like have military backgrounds and they do uh, background checks like extensively all the way to family and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Is it because it's got to be something similar? Because if he if this place has a higher clearance level than the Secretary of Defense, yeah, yeah, it's whatever. And here we have Superman's Rocket Man. Now this part I was fucking creepy. This is like yeah. this is something like straight out of like Alien Three. Because mm-hmm. um, you can tell that they've been doing some experiments and cloning him. They've Keep- been trying really hard to figure out. The, how to the physiology this. of a super being from another planet mm-hmm. with cr- Kryptonian blood, and uh, um, it, this that was spooky. That was spooky. Just the architecture of this, I'm just like, oh, uh, dude, yep. dude, yes. Oh. Uh, but man, just uh, can you imagine the amount of horror, horrific torture that this guy's gone through? Look at this. When I saw it, mm-hmm. I was like, no, 
a, a, a Superman that looks like a Holocaust victim. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Yeah. Uh, he's been under solar red flares all his or solar red lamps all his life. Yeah. Malnourished, experimented on. Can you imagine? That's just. I mean, I, I, I thought. I mean, when I saw that, uh, how bad Batman had it. I was like, there can't be anything worse than what how bad Batman's had it. No, Superman, no. Superman had it worse. Oh, way worse. Way worse. Um, and and, the, and it, it's very uh, analogous to the way that they treat Martian Manhunter a lot. Mm. Yeah, you know what? I bet Martian. I wonder if Jean's is still on Mars guarding the White. Martians. He might have died. He, you know, you never know. He might have died in the White Martian War. That might have been it. Oh, dude! Can't... Wow. The White Martians have taken over Mars. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Man, show us more shit. Get This should have been like a two and a half hour epic where we can this see. This should have uh, been a universe spanning event. Man. Yeah, dude. Because uh, well, granted, the I think the comic series lasted a lot more and got crazier with all that stuff. But you yeah. Know, and you have like a budget and and, and, only and like they were a, gearing up to start it, start it all over anyway. Yeah. Um, so it was a pretty cool thing. It's kind of the same thing that they did on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm-hmm. Now, um, here we got uh, the government saying, give us the alien back. Now, herein lies one of the biggest things about I don't like about the mythos of Superman. The second he gets out into the yellow sun, yeah. he's automatically super powerful. I kind of like the fact that, physiologically speaking, um, it well, takes a while for him to charge up. Yeah. And not just like, boom. But granted, you know, I'll I'll go with either he he, he has to build up to um, gaining if his I powers. Capture time in yes. a bubble. <laughs> quick, quick sober moment. But if you have him in a universe where he has to charge up, like you do this whole like what Smallville did, superhero with puberty, yeah, um, or puberty with superpowers or whatnot. Uh, I'll roll with that, but it, or if you have it where like the sun it, radiation is like an immediate effect as soon as he was like a baby, like in uh, mm. um, uh, the Chris Donner mo- or Chris uh, Chris uh, Reeve movie, Dick Donner, yeah, Dick Donner, Chris Reeve movie, where he's automatically super strong. Fine, sure, yeah. So in this one, you know, I'll I'll still let it slide, but I still prefer the version, especially the fact that he's been under red solar lamps his entire life and well, he immediately is super powerful. Well, you notice that he doesn't have the super strength. Not quite. Well, he I mean, and well, he's having trouble controlling that too. Yeah, well, not to, well. He he does kind of have the super strength. I mean, he did have like a missile blow up in his face. He was able to stop the missile. Yeah, whatever. Um, either way, like, I mean, again, another small nitpick. But right. Whatever. Um, and oh, he just wanders away, man. Mm-hmm. It's very similar to the way uh, Amazo runs off. Yeah, do oh, totally. I mean, he's like he's okay, just kind of lost. I really and confused. know too much about the DCU. Mm. Oh shit! No, sir, that's good. That's way good. No, definitely. I mean, <laughs> DC, the DC animated universe is probably the best version of DC ever made. Ever. Mm. If you want some good DC shit, that's what you binge watch all the time. Yeah, believe me, I do. I, I I've been trying to get the entire. <laughs> All of the series on DVD. Um, I know you've got pretty much all of it. Yeah. So, yeah. And now I just he don't w- have Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. And now here, well, that's technically not that DCAU, but still great right. series, great series. But here we got uh, Hal Jordan on a suicide mission, driving Abinser, Uh And here it looks like we've got the they've he they've actually located the uh, the capital Aquaman's capital ship. Mm-hmm. And uh, now this line coming up here, um, <clears throat> where. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is like this is real Gretzky, oh, right? Oh man, it, it's, it's and mm. beware my, my power. power. Oh, just asshole. Fuck yeah, beware my power, asshole. I was like, dude, these because while I'm watching this, I'm like, can you guys tone it down a bit? This is too scary. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, oh. and it turns out, nope, it's not Aquaman's capital ship. It's just uh, the uh, the Kraken, yeah. Aquaman's prized uh, fish of the sea, and he <laughs> sacrifices it in order to cover his own concealment so he can continue on with the uh, campaign against the amazons ah darth vader of the sea pretty much yeah man <laughs> pretty much <laughs> no that actually does come from a, a green arrow uh comic oh really yeah uh it's the rebirth one by <laughs> kevin smith funny enough funny enough dude <laughs> hal jordan's dead lex luthor's dead everyone's dying mm-hmm. there's so much death in this movie again more raw carnage than saving private ryan because you know yeah like like what? What? Two of the guys actually make it out alive, but 
uh, you know, spoilers. Um, <clears throat> but holy shit, everyone you know, everyone, even the side characters just get nailed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I also love how they keep uh, Billy Batson as the uh, the leader of the Shazam kids, mm-hmm. just to you know make sure that. Because, you know, it's Billy Batson. Who are these other kids? Whatever. I mean, it's a clever idea, but yeah. he should be the kind of uh, the center point anyway. Mm. Okay. So now here we get the little, uh, <clears throat> as Batman calls it, Braveheart, Braveheart speech. speech. Yeah. <laughs> to rile him up. and Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind They of- can take our land, but they cannot take our freedom. <laughs> but um it's amazing how one little speech heroic speech can rally everyone just all willy-nilly is like yeah well you know what the hell let's go yeah let's do it let's do it even batman who's like one of the most stubborn jackasses on the planet he's like Mm. what the hell i mean (laughs) and i also love how he's like there's got bound to be looting in gotham by now i don't want to miss that (laughs) (laughs) and that's another thing about this batman he kind of actually enjoys it yeah yeah he's even though he's like a real like green beret tough no nonsense dude Mm. he kind of actually you can kind of tell he doesn't mind doing this he's like fuck you criminals shut up crime (laughs) (laughs) i don't drink yeah oh yeah like that's i love how and again not the bat wing but it's just like a casino Thing, yeah, it's just a casino he, plane. He's smuggling high rollers in and out. And mm-hmm. Everything's top shelf. Help yourself. <laughs> and they also make him like a hardcore alcoholic too. Yeah, that's that's another interesting look. In, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, folks. I've been I've been talking most of the day, so I'm starting to lose my voice. So you'll, just bear you'll be with okay. me. You'll be yes, okay. ju- just so just bear with me. Uh, and now here we got uh, the Atlanteans have spotted them, and, and fucking, shit has hit the fan yep, once they sh- more. Shoot down the plane. Now, how do they survive so quick? Now, how does this work? How does the wind go through the windshield? I don't honestly know. Yeah, but it's it's a very directed sheet of wind. Yeah. Did he like Velocity break? And... Did he break the window or something? Yeah. And if he did, that's kind of hard because it, the... it's depressurizing the cabin yeah. fast. And the, not the fact that you okay, know... okay. Physics aside, <laughs> they get hit, and the Atlanteans are coming in uh, full force into what remains of London. Yeah. Um, which has been completely devastated, as we saw earlier. By what's with the, the mark across his face? I don't know. Because I, I, he's not the only one with it. it. It's clearly a battle scar, but it's not. I honestly it, it don't must know. be like a, a soldier rite of passage or something like May, that. Yeah, that that see more stuff from this universe, please. This is, this is really <laughs> fascinating. We want to know more. <laughs> Tell us more. Okay. And, uh, the design for the Atlanteans here. Yeah, you mentioned this earlier. It's not the design for the Atlanteans that we normally see. It looks more, honestly, like the design from the 60s on Marvel's side of the of Yeah, the Namor the uh, the Submariner. Exactly. Um, but you know what? I, I think it, that's kind of like uh, their little nod or tribute or homage or whatnot to uh, Jack Kirby, who has done, you know, such wonderful work in comics that he, I mean, he really was like, he was probably even bigger than Stan Lee back in those days. Mm. Um <clears throat> or if well, anything uh jack kirby was the was the impetus behind it all yeah yeah and so, created this fucker oh yeah that's your gonna <laughs> fuck yes <clears throat> mm. so now we got uh everyone surrounded on all sides and they seriously fucking stop fighting you can literally level everything are is it really worth it is it really worth it mm-hmm. is it really worth it but you know when when you're pissed off and you're in the heat of war and yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and and I love how Lois Lane is actually fighting with an assault rifle mm-hmm. as part of the resistance. I thought that's a really cool touch. Well, her father is General Lane. Yeah, that's true. She uh, So she's probably got the training from way back. Maybe, but although her, her uh, at least according to the comics, I mean, it changes up every once in a while for, depending on the story you read, but... Um, traditionally, General Lang is an Air Force general. Yeah. Um, so it's a different kind of training if, say, he was like an ar- she was an army brat or a marine brat or mm-hmm. whatever. But it, still, it, the, Lois Lane is an extremely strong character. Anyway. Yeah. 
Um, well, like we said, field journalist. Yes. Um, what a hell of a journalist. I mean, you don't mm. see any badass journalists like that in this in this day and age. Um, <clears throat> so right here we got uh, uh, Wonder Woman beating the fuck out of each other, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I, I kind of wish that uh, as good as the sound has always consistently been in uh, these movies, I always kind of wish that there was a little bit more like war- design. No, no just uh, more war background noise mm. um, just to really give it. Uh, like unseen scope like there's a war constantly being fought on a huge scale outside mm-hmm. of this one little fight here uh so uh yeah well, here we got now i'm with aquaman here in that argument like dude you fucking killed my wife you beheaded her i was defending myself you wear your and you're wearing her tr- uh her her, cr- her, her crown, crown like, like a, a trophy tr- it, dude seriously i mean Wonder Woman is supposed to be the ambassador of peace. Mm-hmm. Wearing the uh, wearing your uh, uh, ally's best, uh, your ally's wife's uh, crown after you beheaded her doesn't send a good signal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're just kind of asking for war. I mean, Wonder Woman doesn't ask for war. She only fights when she really needs to. Uh, and here You've we got forgotten you. the wisdom of Solomon. Yes. Ah, oh, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Although here he's known as just Shazam, mm. um, or uh, I don't, actually I don't I forget what he's exactly. at this point. It, uh, at this point, the politics between the two companies, Marvel and DC, had been set. So uh, Marvel owns the title Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. but DC owns Shazam. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. the that probably that that might be it because that's that is the well yeah, I don't know because they, they did a a Shazam uh, short with Superman. Uh, it was like a 20 minute long thing and they still kept the Captain Marvel thing. And we got Black Black Mantis man. And he just crushed her head like a candy wrapper. <laughs> I know this is badass man. Oh man, that's How are there still cars like in prime condition around here? That's Should... a good question honestly. <laughs> <laughs> now, do, now did you Wisdom also... of Solomon. <laughs> did you also notice on uh, um Captain Marvel there are like actual scars on his face? Yeah, each one representing each of the kids. Uh, that was I thought was a really cool yeah, touch. Yeah, that man. is that... a cool touch. Ah. And here we got Grifter. Fall, damn it, fall! Mm-hmm. Jesus, Jesus, man, Jesus. There's so much. Ah, this is this is. Yeah, an when I first saw fight. Grifter, though, I thought Red Hood. No, no, no. Yeah, because Grifter was actually uh, invented by uh, Jim Lee, who did also did the Hush stuff. Mm. So it's uh, you know you're still around the same kind of era. And right here, boom, blast them, mm-hmm. and this part, bam, they k- just yeah. kill him, man. Everyone's dying. And, you know, speaking of death, boom, just, just Amazon. I'm not even going to look. Dropping motherfuckers left and right. And speaking of dropping motherfuckers left and right, here we go. And bam, they oh. get, Batman gets downed. Uh, and uh, here we go. Flash just, um, you know, I'm surprised he didn't grab the back of his head. Mm. Whip lash. Because <laughs> even towards the end, he's like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? Like, uh-huh. I, I need a puke. <laughs> Lifts up his mask and bleh. And uh, <clears throat> see now in the background, you can actually hear um, some of those distant uh, war sounds. That yeah, I feel, I feel like they should have been constant throughout, just to give it that sense. But yeah, you know, it does need that certain uh, world building at, feel. Yeah, the atmosphere. But at the same time, if you focus on that all the time, it starts to get drown out, out. Yeah. So yeah, minor thing. I, I guess it, uh, that's just what it, I. It's done. about balance. Mm-hmm. It, um, but I'm still kind of glad that they kept it in there because this is definitely a, a huge war. Now, how did Batman escape when with like a, a blast through his gut? Uh, actually, I do know how. Mm. Because he's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> now, I remember showing this to my roommate because uh, she hadn't seen this. And she was like, oh, I want to see a Flash movie because, you know, you hardly see a Flash movie. and yeah. that, that sort of thing. And she was like, dude, this fight right here. This is how you do a flash, a, a, a flash fight of speed. Yeah, a speedster fight. This is how you do it because she was she actually watches uh, um, the uh, the CW uh, Flash and some of the other series uh, mm-hmm. that Flash has been in, and she's like, none of it's really gotten it right. But this sequence right here is like, oh my fucking god, this sequence got it right. Yeah, and the thing is that it's very hard to do the Flash as a as an effect because like. Even back in the 80s when they did the original series, mm-hmm. uh, they 
it the way they did it was they filmed it against a uh, a black piece of velvet mm -hmm. and then just uh, rotoscoped in the yeah. Which doesn't work. Now, boom! Right here. Ow! Right through the femur. Youch. Thank God for the speed force healing his, him. Because, gee, man, yeah. Flash goes through some really heavy oh, shit. Yeah, he gets burned alive. He gets his fingers broken. He gets his Honestly, I, when I saw this, I was really expecting the black Flash to come through. Yeah. And because and then boom boom man just like yeah. leave him just either leave him alone or just fucking kill him already like jesus and speaking of jesus jesus look at this war ground i mean mm -hmm. everyone's getting it and here we got grifter barely holding his own boom gets hit boom pin cushion boom man. dude he gets boromir right there yeah. boom right and he the takes fucking... one out as he's dying yeah one right in the fucking face jesus man jesus everyone's dying and right here the moment where we actually realized that uh flash it, it actually that uh professor zoom didn't do any of this mm -hmm. it was all flash's fault yeah that's you can't that's dope you can't imagine how devastating he's i mean flash has already gotten the fuck beat out of him left and right he's got himself burned alive but to know that he is responsible for this reality, mm -hmm. for all the tragedy and all the horrific things that his friends have gone through just to save his mother. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, t I, I think you should convert to Catholicism right now. Catholicism? Yes, <laughs> Catholicism right now. Catholicism, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Buddy Christ approves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but, uh, <laughs> and uh yeah and professor zoom is just fucking evil man mm. oh my god we're, when are we gonna get a movie like this in live action i want movies like this in i live don't action. think we're ever gonna get a movie like we're this not in gonna live get action, one though. for a long time <sighs> i mean again dc is raining on television and in animation that's it mm -hmm. i mean marvel's kind of got it in television but really they reign home superior in the uh in uh, the, the theaters yeah the cinemas and um, on netflix oh yeah definitely yeah they know how to do a netflix series mm -hmm. uh and it's, dude fucking stop kicking stop kicking please stop kicking <laughs> it hurts you, i mean you're like the schoolyard bully mm. <laughs> and here we got more uh, uh look at look oh, at this animation this part look at this animation dude oh. i mean you can man they got a real budget for this mm-hmm um, which is why I kind of wish that they just spent it into more runtime instead of like cool effects like this. As cool as these effects are, I still would have yeah. preferred a little bit more story, but whatever. All right, now uh, Aquaman, as you saw, just got fucking eaten by that three-headed dog. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cyborg's barely holding his own, and dude, this is intense war fight, man. I mean, mm -hmm. it is. And if you guys can, and really, if you guys can see this stuff on big screens with big speakers, do so because mm -hmm. they they always go all out, and the stories are just fucking epic. Yeah. But, um, and here we got Aquaman just fucking just breaking, dripping out. in blood. Too. Yep, breaking out of the thing. And I love this. Bam! Look out! That, that's some serious force, dude. Uh, and uh, Cyborg's arm cannon is shattered. Beats the. Punches the living Jesus out of him, and mm. more kicking. Stop kicking, and rips open to rips off his arm, ah. and is ready to rip his heart out of mm -hmm. his body. And that I thought was really cool because you're yeah. like, how does how, how much uh, organ uh, organic material does Cyborg maintain? That is a good question. We're never actually sure on that. Well, in Justice, in the sequel, Justice League War, it actually goes into that kind of a storyline. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like how they presented it because uh, it's, well, well, you'll see it when you actually watch it. Yeah. But, man, I hated Justice League War because it's- A lot of people hated it. Because so. it, it was based on the New 52, and I hate the New 52 because every, oh, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and here, <laughs> that little thing backfired. Shazam! Boom! Oof. Now, this moment right here, I thought is the moment where they actually might have gone a little bit too yeah. far. Straight up kills Killing Billy, kids. Billy Batson, a kid. Is fucking dead. Now, now I'll go with the off-screen death. Yeah. But when you show his dead eyes, fucking oh Jesus, dude. God. Are you? I'm actually almost, almost tempted because I'm glad that they're going this far. 
uh, and taking it into those territories. Boom! Aquaman's arm goes off. Yeah. Talk, talk about karma. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm kind of glad that they really did stick to their guns and went as far as they really could. Because mm-hmm. uh, when are we ever going to see this again? It's when are we going to see kind of this kind of stuff? We're not going to see it in the theaters. Fucking no. Oh, hell no. I mean, this is like borderline R rating. Yeah. Because of the violence. I mean, if this were like a live action movie, this would have been straight up R rated. Mm-hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and uh parents uh, don't show this movie to your kids oh jesus no I mean, that would be traumatizing yeah like I mean, you 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 thought you had it bad when bambi's mom was shot me, fuck you look at this dude i mean all of aquaman's allies are dead aquaman <laughs> has no arm i mean they're everyone is dead, dead. And look, he and now Wonder Woman finally, you know, follows through by literally stabbing him in the back, not just mm-hmm. metaphorically this time. <clears throat> and uh, and I love how uh, she's like, uh, you know, the women, the uh, the men of Atlantis can not live. You've been a pestilence. The mother Gaia has had too long, but we'll enslave your women. <clears throat> oh, you know, what would be a really great live action Aquaman was that the guy who played the Blob in. X Men Origins Wolverine. Mm. Mm. He has the right look mm. for a straight up Maybe. comic book version of Captain America. I didn't see Origins. Harry was kind of so it's skipped not it. a great movie, honestly. I'll take a look at it. But I really love the fact that she had tears in her eyes. Yeah, just before she killed him, because dude, these two were actually lovers mm-hmm. at one point. <clears throat> and so, and but oh, yeah, no. Aquaman's gone. And here's Captain Adam. The Doomsday device is about to be activated. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I really love that they had at least one sympathetic character in the, uh, mm-hmm. the Atlantean army. I kind of wish that they did with uh, the uh, the Amazons, too. But, yeah. you know, runtime, that sort of thing, no time. But yeah. nice that they were able to sneak it in here. And boom! Now, here is the moment, uh, the other moment uh, from Watchmen. Yeah. The, uh, the apocalyptic uh, uh, blast that just kind of wipes out everything. And especially when you see Wonder Woman, you know, kind of cradling uh, Aquaman in her arms. In just a minute, and you just, yeah. And you see her hair get flown up. And it's very reminiscent to when uh, Bernie, the two Bernies, get lit up in the explosion in Manhattan. Mm. Now, uh, and here's another moment where I thought where they thought, well, I'm like, Jesus, they're really taking this all out. Mm-hmm. Where uh, right here, bam! Gunshot to the head, but now we don't just see the gunshot to the head. We see through it with the brains and everything, dude. Yeah. Dude. Dude. You know, honestly, the way that the uh, explosion uh, emanates, it's very similar uh, animation-wise yeah. to Akira. Oh, okay. see, I haven't seen that yet. You need to I fucking know, see I know, it, damn man, it. I know, There's so many... There's oh. like there's a literally uh, literally no oh, hyperbole. A billion movies that we all need to no, see. Well, no hyperbole. There's literally about a hundred movies that I have and never watched, and I mm-hmm. really need to. But you know, I'm only I'm only 21, so I'm still getting up there, and I'm trying. I'm right, trying, right. folks. I'm trying. I can only do so much. I I uh, my motto in life is I try to be Superman, but uh, or I'm not Superman in life, but I try to be. <clears throat> so uh, and speaking of super and speaking death. and speaking of Superman, yes, this would be a good <laughs> death. death. Um, oh. And speaking of Superman, <laughs> the, uh, the, he he gets, stays with Cyborg, who flat out gets killed right here. And here it is. That's Watchmen right there. Mm-hmm. And Superman stays with uh, uh, Cyborg as he has his final moments, and you can only assume he dies. I mean, yeah. he might be Kryptonian, but even he can be killed. I mean, Doomsday po- proved that. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, uh, thank God. Man, Flesh heals a lot faster than i thought he could he could almost give wolverine for his money <laughs> i want to see a race between healing factors for flash and wolverine now i go <laughs> and flash wins by just the hair and i'm like ha fastest man on the planet and then you know <laughs> wolverine just like <laughs> and yeah wolverine uh, and then wolverine just kind of uh you know puts one in his arm and he's like heal that <laughs> asshole <laughs> <laughs> uh. now he right he, okay now there's a moment uh right when barry's uh, about to catch up to his former self mm-hmm. um and uh you know past or uh, what do you call it past yeah past barry the the, the non-fucked up barry right um actually sm- uh, sees like what the hell and smacks future barry you know war war torn barry right here yeah and he kind of stops midway 
See, to me, that was like a really awkward thing. Yeah, that is because that is not because if you're easy... running. So if you're running so fast that because you would think you would just like drop out of the time. Honestly, screen. I would think that that kind of a, a a hit would like be catastrophic. Like it would rip apart reality. Well, not rip apart. At least kind of distorted a bit. Yeah. But I love how it went completely quiet. And he says, "Mom, I'm so sorry." That's mm. a really good moment. And even right before, like, uh, when he breaks the time barrier, everything goes quiet, just kind of like a, almost like it's like a sonic boom, as, uh, you know, Professor Zoom was saying earlier. Yeah. Everything goes quiet, and then, boom. <laughs> and, you know, that a little bit of a cop-out right with the headline. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Kind of cute. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, and speaking of cute, I love this uh, line as he walks out of the door. He's like, you, you gotta, you'll be at this stuff for a week. Well, at least it's not, not the, the end, end of the, the world. world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, man, uh, what a ride that poor mm. Flash has been through. Can, I, actually, did that technically uh, take place all within like a, a day, at least in this reality, a day in his conscience? That might be. More clarity. Mm. More clarity. Please. You know, maybe we should, you know, okay, because I... For any actual listeners out there, because I know they're far and few at this point, mm. but if there are any comic book fans out there, you know what? We haven't actually sat down and read the comics, so if you're like really yelling at us, like it's in the comics, bitch! It's in the comics. Read the fucking comics. Like we will eventually. Eventually, we're busy. yes, we're we're trying. We're making episodes for you people. So yeah, yeah, it's a free show. <laughs> well, don't yell at them. They're ch- we can't. It's a free show. Fuck you. <laughs> And you just lost us 100 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> that was like half of our viewers. <laughs> All right, so we're back in the Batcave. Uh, now, as we can see, it's a lot more high-tech and a lot more sophisticated. And, and look at the uh, change in uh, costume with Barry. Yeah, too. well, not just Barry, but Batman, because in yeah. the beginning, he was blue. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this one I thought was really nice mm-hmm. for Bruce. Yes, a gift. Um, and uh, the reasoning for that is because of the time ripples. Just because you know he was able to stop his uh, his other self from uh, fucking everything up, that still caused like a small time rip, but it was just like a small enough one that it only changed the look of the costumes. And that therein lies the transition to the new Fifty Two. Mm. And this line delivery from oh, Kevin Conroy yes. was just heartbreaking. Mm. You're one hell of a messenger. Thank you. Oh, oh man, mm. God! Conroy as always nails it. Every and he's not in this movie for a long time because when you hear like Kevin Conroy's playing Batman, right on. He's in here for like very, very. He's in there for like a minute. This part here I find interesting because only in animation, only in animation, can we ever have a tracking shot of the Flash. I I disagree. I mean, with, if you give like a, a studio like a hundred million dollars for visual effects, they can do it. Yeah, they can. But um, it's very reminiscent of, like, the Spider-Man movies. Like, the hero saved the day, and he's going to run off into the, the city. Mm-hmm. The only way he can, because, you it, know, Spider-Man swings away, but Flash runs. It's a very Western move. I mean, this is the riding out into the sunset for the for the Oh, yeah, yeah, movie. yeah. And, it's de- and, again, this is a really well-structured movie because it starts off with, you know, some action up front with mm. all the rogues galleries. They give you everything yeah. right up front. They give you a little bit of the origin, but they don't actually flat out go into it like most uh, uh, comic book movies go into. And uh, right after that, they set up the premise, you know, Flash wakes up and everything's wrong. And then you get to discover all this fun shit, go through the adventure. And then afterwards, you get this little epilogue Mm -hmm. and it ends with that, you know, riding off into the sunset, as you said. So really well structured. This by far is my favorite. Um, well, not by far. I mean, there's some up up there like Bat- I like Batman on Talk on Arkham mm-hmm. and uh, Gotham Knight, uh, first, first Flight, and one the Wonder Woman movie. Holy oh, fuck, dude! We'll we'll do Wonder Woman at a later time. Yeah, and by the <clears> way, <throat> comic book fans, I'm not that mad at you. You're <laughs> fine. I even do it. <laughs> Correct us all you want. Yeah, we're we're terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't actually mean fuck you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Michael B. Jordan is cyborg. Yep. Uh, and uh, D. Bradley Baker is Etrigan. D. Bradley Baker really is in everything. Now Dana Delaney also was uh, Lois Lane in the Superman the Animated Series, and uh, she was also in the last episode with us uh, as uh, uh, Andrea Beaumont. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. She was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so. Honestly, final thoughts about this movie? Um, 
It's fantastic. It's breakneck breakneck speed, which is absolutely necessary for oh, a right, flash right. movie. Oh, right, right. No pun intended. No, no. <laughs> uh, it, the amount of mounting jeopardy in this film is palpable. You could cut this n- with a knife. Mm-hmm. It's that thick. The, st- uh, the stakes rarely have been this high for the DC animated universe. Mm-hmm. And for, what, for uh, some of the DC animated movies that I've seen, like uh, Doom and... Crisis on Infinite Earths. We've seen some really high stakes. Yeah. Even in, uh, like, the Justice League animated series where, you know, Martians invade and we yeah. have a War of the Worlds battle going on. Um, I like that. <laughs> uh, so that, we've seen really, really high stakes. I mean, that's why the Justice League was formed, to protect the planet when mm-hmm. one hero couldn't be enough. Um, but here, holy Jesus. And plus it's just Flash. Yeah. It's really Flash against uh, trying to, you know, get all these crazy sons of bitches to work together and uh, make something out of it. So, fantastic flick, man. I, mm-hmm. This was bar... Uh, bar none. Uh, yeah, shut up. This was one of my favorite ones. Uh, I, I know I've seen it, said it many times before. No, no, but, no you're fine, you're fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is... This is uh this is the kind of stuff that uh, Warner Brothers needs to be producing for live action. Yeah. Why? Because Are... the guys who make this really know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. They've handled the characters for forever, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, since 1993. Yeah. Well, 1992 actually, or even mm. further back, like 91. I think that's when they really started production on Batman. This epilogue right here, if you stayed, hopefully you've stayed along. Um, right here, boom. Parademons. Parademons and... Fucking parademons. Yeah, and if you... Because at first I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? And then I had to pause it, and I saw the uh, the uh, Dark Size U logo, mm-hmm. like the horseshoe logo, and I'm like, oh, that's fucking Apocalypse. <laughs> the next one is with Dark Side. Dar- okay, for those of you out there, Dark Side is my all-time favorite supervillain. Mm. I love... Because he feeds and channels off of things, and in the animated series, he was... Pitch Perfect, voiced by Michael Ironside. Yes. That's how he was supposed to be. Like He's got one of my favorite villain lines of all time. He actually uh, slams Superman in the ground, and then he steps on his face and lurches it into the ground, and he looks down at Superman, and he just says, This is where you belong, Superman, under my heel. Honestly, my favorite uh, ah. dark side moment, though, it, it's in the same episode. Yeah. But it's... um. Uh, this pain beam is oh. like uh, it, imagine the worst oh, yeah. pain you've ever it's, felt. Uh, oh yeah, he just now ta- times no, no. by ten. Actually, it wasn't in the same episode. That was in a different episode because the one I was referring to was one where you know spoilers. It's in Destroyer. No, uh, no, no? The, no. That one was uh, in uh, um, Twilight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, mine. <clears throat> my favorite is in Destroyer. Yeah, where he's. Uh, <clears throat> it's called the Agony Matrix. Direct neural stimulation of pain receptors. All of them. Imagine the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. Times a thousand. Now imagine that pain continuing forever. Oh, that's right. You don't, don't have, have to, to imagine. Oh, that's evil. That's that is a, evil. That's a villain to get. Oh, oh. dude. I want to see. The, I dream of the day that we finally get to see. Superman in a live action movie going up against exactly. Dark Side in the right ways. Just, just get fucking Warner Michael. Brothers. You want to make a hundred billion dollars? Put Dark Side in a movie and make him like that. Yes, and make Superman really cool too. Because you know, yeah, we gotta have the hero. But um, <clears throat> that that's why Dark Side is one of my all time favorite villains. He's just uh, he I mean, because he, he's pure power. Not to also mention, but you know, the Joker or Dark or, or like uh, you know uh, Doomsday. They'll flat out kill you, but yeah. Dark Side doesn't doesn't always necessarily just kill you. He'll actually break you down mm-hmm. and turn you into the thing that you hate the very most, and you're gonna like it. Yeah, he'll he'll make you he'll turn you into a vicious animal oh. that destroys everything that you love, and you're gonna like it, mm. and you're gonna serve as his uh as his pawn forever. He's he's the top notch villain. Mm-hmm. And it's really and it's really sad because the sequel because that end credit sequence was actually supposed to be a, a teaser se- uh, thing for the next DC animated movie, which was Justice League War. Mm. And I was pumped, man. I'm like, this movie is fucking bitching, man. I can't wait for Justice League War. When I finally got me a copy, man, was I disappointed. <laughs> 
holy <laughs> shit because superman is a dick mm. uh wonder woman is got this like thor thing going on oh, where she's really like, yeah where she's like uh, you know completely oblivious to the culture and it's played for laughs and uh... The only thing that was kind of redeeming about it was the interaction between Batman and uh, uh, Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. That was about it. And they also had like a, an origin story for uh, Cyborg. You might find it interesting, but I didn't quite care for it because it was like, wait, what? How does that? It, what? It, Honestly, but, my favorite. Uh... But, well, the, actually, the biggest injustice of that movie was their treatment of Darkseid. They made him a hulking brute. <sighs> that was it. A hulking brute that needed to be take the, taken down like a Super Mario's brother villain. You jump on him until he submits? Actually, in that one, they uh, have to gouge out his eyes. So that way he can't blast the... Uh, um, oh, Mega Beam? Yep. That's, that was the uh, the plan, but... You know, big spoilers, but it, I, watch it any if if I were you, John, just go watch it anyway. Because yeah, I'll watch it just but, so I can yeah, say I have seen it. Yeah, it's not worth a second viewing because man, I, man, man alive. Ugh. And but oh, of course, what really pissed me off was they didn't get Kevin fucking Conroy as Batman. <sighs> God damn it! I know there's not even he, even Conroy couldn't come in and save the movies. He, I bet he took one look at that script and like, oh fuck no! <laughs> uh, get somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna just be over here in the corner brooding. Mm. I, am, I am vengeance. I, I am, am the night. I am Batman. Yes. Oh. Uh, okay. And, my question is. Yeah. If they were to do a, another DC animated movie that follows right after uh war and it's the uh batman through time uh chronology that would have been cool i would have loved to have seen that this. would have been interesting do it kind of like pulp fiction too yeah although i you know i know it seems really odd for saying this because you know i've been sucking conroy's dick like no end <laughs> but um <clears throat> i i wouldn't want kevin conroy to voice in that one mm-hmm. just because i i feel that it's too otherworldly to have the most familiar voice of Batman. Cause mm-hmm. that's getting into some, cause if you read that in the comics, it's, it gets into some really strange and, um, off putting territory where it's like, yeah. this is not a really a Batman story. This is just like, um, a, it, it's, it's more about Bruce Wayne trying to get back to being Batman. Yeah. Uh, so, and yeah. it's about the, um, and it's also interesting the way that, uh, bats thematically work in that story too. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. well, 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 it may be, I mean, I'm still waiting for Killing Joke to come out with <laughs> that. That's going to be an awesome send off for Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Final thoughts? Fucking go see it, man. Uh, just whatever you do. If you've watched this movie, if you haven't seen this movie before and you're watching with contracts, what the fuck is wrong with you? You <laughs> idiot. You, you don't watch it. Honestly. But uh, uh, if, just go out and see the movie uh, when you can. Don't spoil it for yourself because, oh my gosh, the, the fun of it is just figuring out what happens one right after another. Mm-hmm. Um, great movie. And when you do see it and you try to uh, describe it to your friends, just say, Flash wakes up one day and everything is wrong. Yeah. That's it. Because That's all you need to say. Uh, that's a perfect setup anyway. So one of my personal favorites from the DC animated uh, original movies um it's still going as one of my favorites i'm so eager to see for them to do uh really good ones because as of late they've been kind of and they their quality has been kind of sagging a little bit in my opinion but you know it's it's they're still really the yeah. top-notch stuff cause, way better than batman v superman and whatever those <laughs> things are doing i'll i will gladly watch because the- seriously it's like they got you got your Mark Wade and my Frank Miller. You, you know, got my Frank Miller and my Mark Wade. Yep. <laughs> Two great tastes that go right together, apparently. No. No. Nope. 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 Actually, you know what? You know what's sad? I'd rather watch the Justice League War movie again than watch the live action Justice League concept <laughs> thing that are coming out. It's just. I, uh, I, although I, although you know what, for hmm. what it's worth, I'd be stoked if they can prove me wrong. Yeah. If Batman v Superman turns out to be a real pimp movie and get, segues into a really cool setup for Justice League and Wonder Woman, awesome! Yay! If not, fuck you! Yeah, uh, hard up in the ass till you get two Adam's apples. Oh yeah, that hard. Because, oh, dude, we have... Uh, we have standards, okay? We do. I mean, we have Christopher Reeve from... 
1978 and 1980, and we have the Dark Knight trilogy, and that's it. Yeah. Come on, man. Where's the DC? I mean, Marvel. Marvel Marvel's might... killing it. Yes. Although I still say wait for uh, Marvel to kind of die out because it will eventually. Eventually, and, and yeah. then And then let DC do its thing. Honestly, do the this, shared universe. This will do... The whole superhero genre, I'm fairly sure, in film, yeah. will, go the, will go the way of the Western. Yeah, Spielberg said in one of the articles. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I still say that DC needs to stop fucking freaking out about mm-hmm. what Marvel's doing. Just do individual uh, standalone epic stories. Yeah. Uh, for Because you're killing it with the animation. Clearly, this is a, a marketable and profitable angle. Well, it, it's not really just that. I mean, cinematic-wise, um, they should stop worrying about what Marvel's doing. Do standalone epic storylines. Like, Mark Miller actually had a, a plan for a Superman trilogy. Each, of them, each uh, movie would have been three hours long, released uh, a year apart, and it chronicles Superman's stories ever since he was a baby on Krypton, all the way to uh, where it ends, him alone on the planet Earth, and he dies alone because of Red Sun, and because the the planet has turned to a Red Sun, because um, being under a uh, yellow sun, it's turned him immortal. Right. Um, so, and he compared it to, like, the Godfather trilogy. That mm. would have been a really... Cr- that would have been interesting. Yeah, see, I would have taken that over Man of Steel and the Batman DC, because I was had high hopes for Super, uh, Man of Steel. It was. I liked the direction. I loved where it was going. But as soon as uh, I was really disappointed in the screenplay, when I walked out, I'm like, "Well, maybe the sequel will be better." Let's throw Batman in the mix. Let's throw Wonder Woman in there. That'll help. Like, no, no. And honestly, the fact that they keep they, whenever I see a story for uh, Batman v Superman or Man of Steel two, I always see, "Oh, they're adding another villain." Okay, adding another villain means that you're desperate. Yeah. That's what Spider Man did, and look what Spider Man oh, is. Oh Jesus, man! Do you know how over, you, that? Was, I can see a mile away that these movies are going to suck, just solely on the fact that they got so many villains. Mark in there. my yeah, mark my words, man. Uh, Batman v Superman is going to tank, then Wonder Woman's going to tank. Suicide Squad may get it a little bit of momentum mm-hmm. if they're lucky, uh, and then Justice League is going to be the uh, the camel that broke the, ca- uh, the, the, straw, the straw that, that broke, broke the camel's, camel's back. back. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's sad and that's sad because I'm still a huge DC fan. I yeah. still like DC a little bit more than Marvel. I, Cause I'm still a Marvel uh, guy. Well, uh, put it this way. Um, DC, I like their stories better than Marvel, but Marvel, I like their characters better. Mm. Um, but since story always comes first for me, DC always. Uh, so I just lean slightly over towards the DC spectrum. That's fair. Um, um, so we're not actually going to have a, uh, a brand new episode next week. Yeah, uh, l- next week we're doing the Forty Eight Hour Film Festival, but we've already produced a uh, episode of uh, Comtrack. It's going to be uh, Batman Sub Zero, another DC animated movie, uh, continuing this month of uh, DC animated movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and next, and then after that, we're going to do um, Justice League: New Frontier. Yes, and this is going to be a nice little segue because. I really hated that movie. And I really liked it. So we're going to start our love-hate month. It's going to be good. And you are going down, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, I think that's it's about time to turn in. Yep. Uh, hey, you've been listening to Contract. Thanks, you guys, for uh, joining us. Uh, and uh, we'll come back for the next episode. And uh, you have yourself a good night. And uh, um, This has been an episode of Contract where you'll never have to watch a movie alone again. Thank you.